how did the idea of Toy Story 4 and the development of, th of this project happen? And who are the people that need to add to that story? Obviously, I would think the screenwriter, but the producers probably maybe even. Let's start well, with Andrew. Yeah, let's start with Andrew. Uh, you know, um, Andrew Stanton, who's written on all the films and kind of the godfather, one of the godfathers of Toy Story. And he, he had an idea that w became a, a secret treatment that I think he was writing before three even came out, and that's what he told us, but nobody knew he was working on this. And um, in that idea was the return of Bo Peep. And uh, uh, so that's, uh, that's where that idea kind of started from. Um, but that was the nugget of the idea, but it, it, it was, it was f it's worth noting that the, the three of us, and b before we roped you guys in, we were sort of among the people at, at Pixar that were, that questioned it. I mean, our initial reaction was, well, why, why would we do that? Because three had this beautiful ending, and um, and in part of it, it was this kind of poetic and emotional ending. Par Toy Story has always been sort of a based on a parental analogy. You know, the t the toys are there for their kids when they need them, and this this kind of story of the the Andy going off to school felt like this closure. And Andrew, what he was working on, unbeknownst to us, was. Uh, a version where he said that's never been the ending in his head. That's always been the ending of the Andy uh, Woody relationship. But this, there's another chapter, and now he's he's writing this, of course, uh, as his kids. Our kids are a little younger, but his kids had just left to to go to school, to go to college, and I. Uh, he kind of was fueled a little bit by this observation of us as parents, and I think in the first position was Andrew, is what do you do when, you, when you've when you done everything you've kind of been asked to do, you've done a good job, and now you're, you're, you're left to redefine yourself? And was he started talking about that with us, about Woody, that became very interesting. We went from kind of crossing our arms a little bit to like sitting forward and going, okay, well that is interesting. What would he do? What if we could what if we could pivot Woody in a way that would have him even questioning who he is and what he does, why he does it? That felt movie worthy. Yeah, and us. I think that took us to like a really interesting level too, where it was like Woody is questioning his purpose, and then we kind of expanded that out to like, what is our purpose in the world? And that kind of became like the driving theme a little bit of the movie. Which yeah, led us to Forky. It's very much an, <laughs> an empty nest story for, for Woody. It's like he, he has been there for his kid no matter what, which is what he's been saying for three movies, and and now his kid went to college, and it's kind of like now I'm in a, he's in a new room, which was, that's the thing that got me excited about it. It was like, I know Woody so well from watching all these films, but I've never seen him in this situation before, mm -hmm. and that's what was really exciting about it. Talk about developing this film that's that you even show, Andy, from the original Toy Story. You could say it's nine years during the, the scope of this whole thing, but Andy... 25 years ago did not look like that. So what were the challenges of producing Toy Story 4 with the technology and the know-how that you guys have now and at the same time making it feel like it was Toy Story? Yeah, uh, yeah. With Andy coming back in this one, you know, the technology has marched forward so far that we needed to rebuild and reshade all the characters to bring them into the up to code, so to speak, to get them in the movie. Andy, that gave us a chance to kind of upgrade Andy a little bit. If, if we were to just put the Andy from the first Toy Story in this one, I think he would have scared audiences the way that he did back during the first one. We had the chance to make him look a little bit better, so we took advantage of that. We had to put him in a red hat, though, to make sure everybody knew it was, it was Andy. Um, but yeah, uh, technology, it's, that was, Toy Story was the first ever animated film. And so it's kind of, it's been light years, uh, since then. And it, and it's, and so we had the chance to put a lot of real rich detail, um, into this film that we didn't, uh, have in the early days. You know, we're always pushing technology to the limits on all of our films, but, but now what we're capable of as, as a studio and just in the world, um, is just so much more detail. Uh, but it was important to us that it felt like the original Toy Stories did. You weren't pulled out by that new look, but that when you think back in your mind's eye what it was like to be with these characters in the early films, it felt the same in Toy Story 4. So you're directing for the first time, and you're directing based on a sequel that was originally directed by the founder of the studio and everybody else. Did. So what, what You're what freaking me out right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. So, and and but the other part of it is uh, you were a sole director. O oftentimes with animation, there's two directors. So 
was that uh, especially daunting for you or? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Um, <laughs> it was, uh, uh, when I was offered the chance to do it, you know, I've worked at Pixar for 16 years um, in the story department and um, wrote on Inside Out as a head of story on, it, on that film as well. So I was close enough to see how it works um, but you just, you know, you never really know until you're in the driver's seat and everybody has a million questions for you. And, um, so yeah, it was a lot. I mean, I, I love these characters so much. I experienced the first two films as an audience member. I didn't work at Pixar yet. So I, I got to come into this as a fan, but, um, you know, there's a lot of, a, it's, a, it's a tall order, especially after three and, and make, wanting to make sure it felt like a story that needed to be worth, that needed to be exist in existence and, and worth telling. Um, I recommend for all first-time directors that you should have Tom Hanks be in your film. <laughs> that helps. Tony, what, what were the characteristics of Forky that uh, convinced you that this was a role for you? Yeah, I, I think I said yes a little too fast, actually. <laughs> um, but I, when, when I came in, uh, they, first they, they, they brought me up to uh, Pixar, which is like a creative wonderland, and I had never been. And they were so gracious, uh, but they just, they they showed me a picture <laughs> of Forky, and I was like, "Huh, not what I not what I imagined." <laughs> um, but just the way that they described him as being so new to the universe, not really knowing anything of that, you know, toys would drop to the ground. He'd just be like, "What's going on? Why are you guys doing this?" And he was just such a blank slate. And describing him as really having this childlike wonder and. I remember when my child was five years old and she just had questions nonstop and he was just, um, and he didn't, he, he also, just, <laughs> he just had one route. He's like, I help people eat chili and then I go to the trash and that's, <laughs> that's it. Um, <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that's a wrap. So, um, and so the fact that he, Woody comes along and says, no, you have, you have a greater purpose than that. You have value. And, you know, it's just, and actually, I will say, like, starting out doing about just, you know, doing trash different ways and, and kind of the humor of Forky and all this kind of stuff, it wasn't really until later that this just beautiful kind of meta message came out about someone who might see themselves as just having that one direction. They've been told that and that they have a greater purpose and a greater value really formed. And it's just, just beautiful how it kind of morphed into that, really. Mm -hmm. There's very specific visual performances, sometimes just single uh, eye blinks, very subtle things where you know what those toys are thinking and you know what they're feeling. And the voices, of course, certainly help and, and give you that tenor, but there's also the performance and the silence occasionally um, that you allow these characters to have. So I just want to talk about, your, get, hear about your uh, I guess your rhythm and how you find the ability to allow that breath. I'm glad you're asking about this because this is one thing that I've never seen in animated films, which is letting the scene just kind of be, you know, um, and and knowing that we're, this film is going to be about this relationship between Woody and Bo, I knew that we'd be relying really heavily on our animators, and they are, as you could see, phenomenal at their jobs. So um, my, and they're actors. They're they are. Um, they're just as important as Tom and, and Tony and, and everyone. So, you know, I'd sit down with them and I'd walk them through the scene and kind of go, this is what, what, what he's thinking at this point. He's not saying it, but this is what he's thinking. And um, then Bo sees that reaction and she's thinking this. And so we would literally break it down thought by thought. And then the animators would go away, animate, bring it back together. We'd watch it and see, is this... Is it still tracking? Is it is everything you know working? And um, being in animation, it's amazing that you know nothing is real, obviously, which means that you can direct everything. So, like uh, for example, underneath the car when they're saying goodbye to each other, the raindrops coming off of Woody's hat. One of them was going through his eye, like in front of his eye. So I said, let's move that to the side and have it drip over here. And they're like, okay, yeah, we can do that. So, <laughs> you know, we, every single. I blink every single inhale, every single subtle thing is, uh, has been planned and, and talked through. The film is kind of about separation, I think, in many ways. So I'm just wondering what part of that uh, did you guys connect with or what, what do you see, uh, what was your through line for your part of, of dealing with that theme? 
I, I think it's um, how a lot for me, I mean, really connecting with like Woody's journey and, and Bo and how that kind of tied together was just like this idea of like loss and how do you redefine yourself after you've lost something that really defined your complete identity and your purpose in life? Mm -hmm. And um, how do you find meaning when you have essentially, I, you know, a little bit like, you know, his kid's gone. You know, what, what do you do with that after that? Who do you become when your entire purpose was just to be there for that child and you don't know where you belong in the world anymore? And then you can get into this really interesting emotional territory. And, you know, Woody is mourning the loss and Bo has found a way to redefine herself within that loss. And so she becomes a little bit of a mentor figure to him, which is mm -hmm. kind of a great journey. Do you know, in addition to the separation, I think uh, one thing watching this movie I realized that has been throughout the entire franchise is you see these group of characters that are all incredibly different and they work together, they live life together. Woody is constantly saying, come on guys. And there's, you know, Buzz and Woody could not be more different. And they, there's a celebration of their differences and they find ways to work it out and they're a group and they're a gang and they keep going. And it's just such a beautiful example of like, yeah, that's how we're meant to live. We're meant to live this life together, mm -hmm. you know? So Tony, you've done other animation. I'm just curious as to how this process was different or, or what you enjoy about voicing uh, and doing voices for animation? Yeah, um, I mean, Pixar was really unique because typically with other animation, you're kind of separated in a booth and you, there's a piece of glass in between you and the writers and directors and you know, you kind of do your thing and then everything goes silent and you just kind of see them talking about you and you're just, all the, all the insecurity just flushes over your body. Um, but with Pixar, you're all in the same room. And so you're in the same room and you, you really feel like it's a very kind of collaborative effort, which I really appreciated kind of the warmth that they they made with that. Um, it was, with with kind of voicing something, it's, it's unique because, um, I mean, I look at my character on Veep and it's, there's so much physicality. And actually my, <laughs> my character on Veep really wasn't even allowed to speak. Selena Meyer wouldn't let me speak. And so I could only use my nonverbal. Um, you know, eyebrows and all this kind of stuff. And, and Forky doesn't even have any flexibility. He's just a spoon. You know, his arms are completely out of control. His eyes <laughs> don't even have any control. And so it was all the voice. You know, it was all he, I mean, he, and that's why he just went crazy and asked a ton of questions. So it, it's, it's something that I think it just when I would do it, I would just kind of try to be as silly and then hope it would channel into the microphone. But to speak to, I mean, granted, I, I'm saying all this by saying, like, the voice is so grateful to do it, but we are a piece of this pie and the most of this pie is the artistry and animation that has gone into this movie. It's incredible. And you even look at Forky, he seems very, very simple, but I was talking to Josh about this and his textures alone, like you have the plastic of the fork, you have the, the pipe cleaners of the arms, the googly eyes, the wood of the feet, the clay, all those textures are so specific to get right. That is a tremendous amount of work. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, 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 uh, the hours of labor that has gone into this is just unbelievable. Well, I really thank you all for taking time out and to, to talk about the making of this film.